start. So um, we've all seen the agenda. This is the updated one with the changes and the correct admission statement. So is, does anyone have anything they want to change or adjust? Okay. Um, so I need a motion to accept our October 2021 is not right. They're February. February. Yeah, 2022. I make a motion to accept the February 22 minutes. I right, second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Great. Um, public input. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Leslie. I hear. I think William said your name is Carl. Yes, I'm Carl Solberg. Hi. I live up on uh, uh, Maple Drive. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know, a thousand yards from the Public Works building. Oh, nice. Uh, Bridge. Nice. Yeah. And uh, we live in a nice piece of property, about 80 acres. Oh, neat. Uh, very pretty. And I had, uh, uh, I have a forest management plan with the uh, USDA and RCS, and we had a selective thinning under the EQIP Environmental Quality Incentives Program. And now I'm um, in, engaged in the suppression of the invasive species. And in Delaware, I was a certified uh, pesticide applicator for invasive plant species um, and we had in Delaware we enjoyed a certification for just herbicide applications for conservation purposes you don't have that distinction here in Maine so if I'm ever to do that kind of uh, conservation intervention up here I have to get the whole the whole bailiwick you know, road crop and pesticides and everything the licensure here is a little, I don't know it's maybe too inclusive I suppose you'd say. But the reason I'm here uh, today is because of uh, uh, Will Pratt was kind enough to recommend uh, that I participate with the Sylvania Repurposing Committee. And w looking forward to a, a probably a very lengthy uh, and very detailed community engagement around how that property could be best used. But I just wanted to be sure that we had some continuity between the, that committee and the Conservation Committee. Uh, recognizing that we don't know what natural resources at the small landscape scale we own. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly there is always a possibility of either a species of conserva state conservation concern um, or a very interesting uh, uh, established com otherwise common habitat but a, a, a superior example of it um, through which a trail would be very highly attractive uh, educationally and recreationally. Um, so, you know, at some point I see us overlapping and working together on a management plan for that property. I, I love that you reached out, Carl. Thank you for this because we've de Sylvania is something that's definitely come up in conversation. Mm -hmm. There's an old fisherman's trail or path, right? Yeah. That's on that, on Sylvania. And I think it does go on to private property. So it'd be interesting to see if there was ever a chance to like rehab that, that trail. Um, I know that the a few people in like the Facebook, the Wilderbro Facebook groups have mentioned interest in that too. Haven't you? I've seen that mm -hmm. somewhere else. And the trail goes behind the Friendship Street School, so if that also became a usable park-like area for the town, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. I sort of figured you all know way more about this site than I do already, <laughs> uh, but you know, I expect to get up to speed and be able to know some of these things about the property. I'll go bushwhack in the, in the pucker brush one of these days. And um, Max was just kind enough to give me a tour of the, uh, the uh, 19th century house, which the county, uh, the township now owns. Um, so I have no other agenda but to br bring to your attention that I hope we'll be able to work together. And uh, I don't know if the main natural area program will have any opportunity to look at it. It meets the minimum criteria for a field survey for species. Um, but they would determine that it would be eligible for such an action and we would have to discuss whether that's something we want to have, have occur there. Well, Carl, since you're here, <laughs> and since I haven't had many people to give this to, <laughs> we created this little brochure that just talks about the parks and recreation areas we have in town, like Quarry Hill and like um, yeah. you know, some of these uh, Dutch Neck Marine Park and some of those. So not everybody realizes that, you know, the town forest and or even where they are. Mm -hmm. So we made up this little brochure, and since I have a stack of them, I brought, yeah. luckily well, brought one in. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very excited to see you engaging the biological control of the Woolly Adelgid. That's a terrific effort. Those, 
well, when I was given my first tour there not very long ago, I was shocked at how mature these beautiful 200-year-old trees are. I mean, it's so impressive to see you have such an exemplary, uh, exemplary stand. Mm -hmm. It might be one of the oldest uh, extent um, and viable stands in the state. Actually, it extends back to, you know, the property's owned by someone else, but part, um, Pat Spofford and Parker Spofford owned property, and it was um, put in an easement, uh, 500 acres, and it was forever wild, and it, it kind of, it, uh, it kind of is that whole grove. It, it uh, follows through that area. It doesn't abut it exactly, but it is in that general area. Uh -huh. And, who, uh, who manages, uh, uh, monitors the easement? It's the Mid Coast Conservancy. Mid Coast, okay. Yes. All right. I used to be the steward for that for many, many years. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I used to bring my golf cart because, and she, is, she had created, um, Pat had created um, carriage trails. Through there. She used to take her horse and carriage through there, you know, 500 acres of carriage trails behind her house. You know. <laughs> wow. It's Incredible. amazing. Wow. You don't know it's there. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you don't it's realize. Neat. But it's forever wild. It, there's no tree harvesting. There's no anything. Well, that's 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 Just you know we need examples, uh, reference sites like that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Carl, I don't know if you have any, I just want to throw this out there for you to think about, but we um, are going to be talking this evening about some of the events we're going to try to do this year and something we've all been interested in doing is some educational walk series, uh, trail series here. So if there is any trails that sparked your interest and you were like the town forest and you had any interest in leading a walk, we'd certainly love well, I, it. I tend up in the very remote places, so I'm the Mid Coast Conservancy's uh, steward for Reef Point. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. You know, and of course it's an act of Congress just to get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And start the walk. Um, and there's no place to park, so you can't put that on a, yeah. a you know, on an event-related activity. But I'll, I'll be happy to volunteer and help whenever something comes up and that could be of use okay thanks so much carl for stopping in we appreciate thank it thank you sure nice to see you again. yeah good seeing you thank you all and please if you want um, one of us to sit in on a sylvania meeting to just help and with anything we can anything we can help with please sure. feel free to reach out yeah well you know as, as we get some traction on you know actual traction towards objectives and some planning but that community outreach is, is critical yeah we want buy-in and acceptance and some enthusiasm before we make any actual investments. You know? Yeah. Plus, we need other people's money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Us too. Thank you. We all need that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I'll have some uh, updates on Sylvania later. <laughs> if there's time. <laughs> okay. I just thought, um, with the new year, and like Karen mentioned, some of us, you know, being newer members, that it would be nice to review the mission statement and just really ask ourselves these questions. Um, why are we here? What do you see always being discussed but never resolved? How can this commission be of most value to Waldeboro's natural resources? Um, what are we not discussing that we need to talk about? And what three things should we track this year? Um, so we'll start with the mission statement. Um, I guess I'll, I'll just read it out loud to everybody. Our mission is to identify, protect, and enhance the natural areas and parklands of Waldeboro. We will provide information, guidance, supervision, and outreach that can increase the accessibility and enjoyability of these places for the citizens and visitors of the town. I know that sounds a little bit lengthy, but when we were, as the previous board was putting it together, we wanted to, the first sentence is basically the statement. It's mm -hmm. basically the mission. But then we wanted to expand a little bit so that if we were putting things in the paper or press releases, things like that, we could, um, you know, ex expand on, on that one statement so that it wasn't so gen general and, you know, overarching that we could be a little more specific that, that we're into information, guidance, outreach, so that they'd understand the educational things we were trying to do and, you know, and, uh, and if, if doing the trail work is the enjoyability of these places. And again, what you did last year, mostly with the blueberry um, uh, picking and all that, that brings enjoyment to the town and it's kind of a community-based activity. Yeah. So, so I think the reason it's some, somewhat lengthy is because we wanted to expand on what the si simple statement, the first sentence. But again, it's the board voted on it back in I don't know when. <laughs> Had to be <been> 2016. 
must have been. Well, because Edward was still alive. <laughs> well, that was before I joined, so. So maybe it was 2017. Yeah. But we we went over. You know, we did it more than once. Yeah. De depending as the board changed, so now is a good time to go over. And you might want to simplify it. I don't know what people feel about it. It is a little lengthy. <laughs> My only initial thought, and I didn't think much more on it, was do we break it into a mission and a vision statement? Or something, yeah. Yeah. You know, mission, vision, and then... I, I, I was thinking... So I was looking at the our page on the Waldebro website, and it's like, you know, what we copied and pasted... What I copied and pasted from there doesn't match this, and it's just, let's get our wording consistent, whatever that mm -hmm. is, because I'm also hoping that maybe we can put some more attachments on that website page this year, you know, like the frequently asked questions about the hemlocks and just try to bring that as a landing spot for people. Um, you know, the brochures there, we need to drive more people to that site. So, mm -hmm. um, how does everyone else feel about the mission statement? Do you think it's still... Um, I like it. Yeah. I really didn't think it was all that lengthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, to me, it's very clear and concise. Yeah. And it still aligns with the work we've been doing in the last year? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think it's exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. should we make a motion to accept it as is? I or, if we, or if we're not changing it, maybe we don't need to do that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't think if we're not changing, we don't need a motion. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> kind of renew our vows. <laughs> renew our vows. <laughs> okay, does I think there's that one resident who's going to say you never did this motion. <laughs> okay, does anyone want to make a motion? I move that we accept the mission statement as written. I second. All in favor? Aye. Second. <laughs> okay. So here, here's to the hard hitting questions. Um, <laughs> What do you see always being discussed but never resolved? Well, except for Rachel and, and you guys, more board members, we can supposedly in the bylaws, when we go over those, we can have up to seven members. Mm -hmm. And we've never had seven members. We've had five, we've had six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it would be nice to have more board members. And as I'm taking a less and less active role, kind of fading away, <laughs> you need someone to replace me. <laughs> Shaking my head at you, Karen. <laughs> no. Um, more board members, that's a really good point. That's something I, I reached out to Max like, a week ago because I was asking him, like, is it five or seven? And so he sent me the bylaws or the, yeah, the bylaws. And um, I tried. I tried last fall. I thought we were going to get a couple. I know Steve's tried. I think we've all given a good effort to bring a couple people in. It's but difficult. Hopefully, yeah. um, with the attention town force is getting and the yeah. good work we've been doing around town it will mm -hmm. it will drive some people our way this year fingers crossed I did bring in two more people that want to volunteer mm -hmm. they've I've got their contact information and they said when you're doing trail work give us a call we'd love to come out they weren't ready for a commitment on a commission right. so I think that's kind of where you start you start with the volunteers mm -hmm. you get people involved so we need the activities and of course, the past two years have been difficult to have any activities. Yeah. Sure. Where we had groups together, but if we start having activities, start getting the volunteers, then those volunteers get, you know, excited or enthusiastic enough to be part of the the board. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think that's where we have to start is just um, having the events where we can get volunteers. Yes, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, does anyone else want to add their thoughts on what they see being discussed but never resolved? I don't know. I think we've gotten pretty good at resolving things, yeah, especially you since you've been yep. been it's taking. It's been a big push the last year to try to. I know we really pulled the reins back and tried to focus on some things to yeah. start checking stuff. We off had to the narrow list. our vision a little because it's there's so many things we could be doing. Yeah. We had to focus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think the board members volunteers is that's going to be in. Speaking from experience with the Garden Club, that's being going to be an ongoing <laughs> thing. Yeah. And that, that there may never be a res resolution to that one. Yeah. No, but I think it would help to uh, shorten term lengths for commission, and also to. I'm a big fan of the quarterly meetings instead of every month. I think mm -hmm. 
a lot of young people, I know it, with us it's hard with kids and stuff to, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, see a five-year commitment to a committee and you, you know, don't know if you're going to have the time. And it's a lot easier to plan like oh, well, a quarterly meeting. I can definitely come to that, but like mm-hmm. monthly can gets hard certain times of year. So I think you'd attract people if you, we change those things. Make it like a two-year term or something. And I see his point. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yes, but yeah. And I like the comment about instead of meetings, that's in the next part, but instead of meetings, maybe we have other kinds. Again, because a lot of what we're focusing on right now is getting the trails back in order, right. you know, getting them back in shape and, and being able to publicize them and having, you know, lunch and learn events at those kind of places. Yeah. So in a way... Um, I agree. I think sometimes, you know, especially meeting every month, sometimes it's just too frequent for the projects we're working on. Like, mm-hmm. we all know what's going on. We're coming to talk about it again for another hour. And we all have limited availability. And we should just, I think, flip that and be like, okay, we know what we need to work on. Let's go work on it for the meeting instead of sitting in a room. Um, yes. The trail work continues. That would be my thing that I feel like we discuss a lot, but we don't get the time to do it together. Um, and, you know, this last late fall, I didn't feel really much. I mean, I know, Rachel, you've been incredible at the Gould Trail, which we really appreciate, but um, <laughs> it's incredible. But I know Dutch Neck and... Mm-hmm. Uh, the town forest has two spots that have just gone really bad that need more we, it needs more foot bridges and like our reviews online like muddy don't don't go in wet season or so mm-hmm. anyway that would be my thing and I know that comes with volunteers but I think it can also come with us making some changes to how we meet and, and plan things um, and I do think when I did to kind of make this agenda I thought about how do we appeal to a younger generation that you know, is intimidated by commitment and what that looks like, and so anyway, we'll we'll get to that though. Um, how can this commission be of most value to Waldeboro's natural resources? This is something I was just thinking about because again, you know, there's a lot of project, there's a lot of things to do, and and what can we f- focus on this year to be of most value to Waldeboro? I think it comes back to the trails. Yeah, the trails and the trail leaders. Um, because once we have those cleaned up, cleared up, we can do some publicity there, and that's when we will gain, mm-hmm. you know, interest and, and people will recognize what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Exactly what I was going to say. But again, we need to narrow our focus so we're not overdoing it. But again, a lot of the trail work can be decided online. It could be like, right. I'm doing this this day, anybody who wants to join me, or, you know, and we can decide if we want to put out a call to. Mid Coast Conservancy and see if Charlie's Trail Group could help us with something in specifically. Yep. You know, they go out Wednesday mornings. That's their thing. Wednesday mornings, 9 a.m. They meet. They go out. Yep. But maybe I can work out something with them for specific trails that we need, because I'm available anytime. And then Steve often can meet us places different. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> well, and if we knew to, if I at least knew a week or two weeks ahead of time when somebody's going to definitely go out I can also put an event on our conservation page Mm -hmm. and so you might generate one or two people but that's one more or two more hands than you had before Mm -hmm. Um, that's true give me time to get time off of work too Mm -hmm. if I knew a couple weeks in advance advance. yeah Yeah. I'd like that I see again you know I know I think I mentioned this same thing last year but I see Waldeboro Historical Society putting up their events for the whole year and I'm like that's what we need to be doing so that way we're not over lapping with people and that people are just getting a head start on seeing the days that we've got something going on mm-hmm. or that we're helping with you know like the shellfish cleanup or mm-hmm. I know Will and I are going to be down at the historical society clean up this weekend those mm-hmm. things you know it's important that we're part of them yeah Midcoast Conservancy has their whole year planned all the way into November <laughs> yeah like, I mean oh. there's still other things that they're adding but they are um, we I went to a meeting earlier today and it's called the um, rewilding program. They're trying to work with um, people to try to convince them for less lawn and more meadows mm-hmm. and more native plantings, riparian buffers, things of that sort of thing. Yeah. And so they're they're going to meet on May twenty second um, from eleven to two at the Waldeboro Village River Park. Oh, nice. They're going to have plant sales and they want all native. They're going to have someone who's identifying the plants that are there, the invasives that are there, the um, the erosion 
and, and, and potential erosion control, riparian buffer type things. And there's may, there may be a lady from uh, Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens looking for caterpillars oh, neat. and identifying what they're eating and what they're doing and different stuff like that. Yeah. So that, um, I think we, we need to know because it's, it's in Waldeboro, so that's a great thing. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that. I did reach out to Midcoast Conservancy after the select board meeting um, and talked to Bob Butler and I talked to the director there and told him, you know, that we're interested in learning more about what they're doing. I know that you're in the loop there um, and I wanted to sit on the Dominic Valley Council meeting and just get to know some people, put some names to faces and um, to see how we can continue to collaborate with them. I know that's networking was something that we talked about last year and I think we're in a good spot to start doing some of that. So um, we'll copy you on the next meeting date. We just had a meeting the end of March, so it won't be till the end of April. Okay. I'll great. copy you on the awesome. Thanks, Karen. meeting date. What was the time on that river park? 11, 11 to 2. Oh. May 22nd is a Sunday. Yeah. May 22nd, 11 to 2. And um, they also want to, um, oh, they're also doing a cleanup with MIDA, but the date isn't set yet. For the Maine Narrow and Trail Association. Mm -hmm. Maria Janess, she used to be an intern at the uh, MBLT. And uh, now she's with Mida, and she runs some of the uh, island cleanups. So I don't know if there's any possibility that we can um, partner with them. But what we can do is we can share their information. Yeah, we we can share, share that. the cleanups that they're doing. They are doing an Earth Day cleanup on the Saturday after Earth Day in Jefferson on Damascot Lake. I don't. The name of the preserve is not familiar to me, but I'm not that familiar with the Tamascot Lake end of things. But they are doing a, a cleanup on Earth Day. And that's coming up quick if we <coughs> wanted to publicize anything, we'd have to think about that. But Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm a little, hopefully there's time in a little bit to talk about that, but I'm hoping to do our own stuff, you know, the encourage a, a neighborhood cleanup on the actual Earth Day. And I don't know, see if you saw my email about maybe trying to collaborate and help the garden club on yes. Saturday because the theme this year is invest in your planet so I thought it'd be nice to connect with another group okay um, um, what wait a minute what's the date on Earth Day um, April 22nd is the day I think I was trying it's a to Friday. overlap with you yeah 22nd is actual Earth Day and then April 23rd is a Saturday mm -hmm. yeah. and I thought that would be a nice day oh, okay. it's kind of like a also an attempt to maybe get some interest with the garden club because I know I heard you say with the president stepping down that things are kind of in flux right now for you guys so yeah a little bit nice to bring some awareness to you guys um yeah I'll have to figure out where what uh, I'm actually the the weather got so nice so fast I'm kind of a little bit behind on actually getting some of the, st the early stuff done, you know, yeah. the cleanup and whatnot. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out that if, if we want to do kind of a, you know, a joint thing, yeah, something for that date or the Saturday. The Saturday. Yeah. Because I work on, I mean, I think most people are working on Fridays. So. And even if it's mm -hmm. just to clean up the rest area, clean up the, make sure that it's clean up at Elm Street Pocket Park thing, just mm -hmm. go around to the different little places yeah, the town landing, and maybe if it's just focusing in the downtown area, just so we could get something small going, but quick. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm and sure again, that I'm sure there's going to be something that needs raking. Yeah, so, and I you think know. if we just do like a nine to twelve, like nothing, because I just don't, you know, the shellfish committee cleanups are coming up right up right behind that, so I don't mm -hmm. want to spend too much energy and effort on this, but I do want to bring awareness to Earth Day and that we're doing something, we're helping a fellow um, group of Waldebro. And I think if we set up at the Madame River Rest area, that gave us some great, you know, people stopped and asked us what we were doing that day. Mm -hmm. And then if people are cleaning up the gardens and trash in that park, mm -hmm. which is our number one problem area for litter. Mm -hmm. But also if we have a list of other parks so when people stop in, we can say, oh, can you head over to Elm Street? Mm -hmm. We've got somebody over there mm -hmm. that can, can help you. And it might uh, open people's eyes up to this pocket park walk. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, if you want to keep your car here, or you, if you want to just drive down to the VFW, I'm still going to call it that, the FW home, <laughs> even though it isn't parked there. And then you can finish up the park at walk, the pocket park walk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and just open people's eyes to the fact that, that there's other little places they can stop and sit down and rest and yeah. check out the 
waterfalls. I think that sounds great. Good idea. That's a really good idea. Okay. Um, what are we not discussing that we need to talk about? I think we talk about everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just Pretty making open. sure. It, you know, I thought a lot about all of you and how we all come to this. We all have a different interest in why we're here. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just wanted to touch base with everybody and make sure that you feel like you're being heard, that we're spending the time that you'd like to see spent on your projects. Um, I think that's kind of where that came from. I'm actually really impressed with the visuals for your conversation with John, with the absence of rain and the talk about expansion. It's, I'm actually more excited now than I thought I would be when I joined <laughs> because I never saw that coming. It was just, yeah. And it's really exciting. But one thing I see in that plan in the future, and it could be years down the road, is doing I'd like to do a lot of research on native plants and maybe turn it into a garden kind of walk and focus on medicinal native plants that would grow wild in these areas. Like we've had uncut wilderness that I'd like to sort of push it back in that direction. That's amazing because people love to they identify do. things as they walk by. Yeah, it makes I'm it more one meaningful. Of those people, so yeah. you know it. You know, but that's where my vision is going, and with this new conversation with the Midcoast Conservancy, I'm just like, have, you, have, have you ever been to the Neil Lash Trail behind the high school? Oh yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's way above, but it, but it's it's, a, it's identifying the things that mm -hmm. you're walking by. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, Rachel. Um, do you do you have any interest in leading a walk for us in to identify plants, flowers? think about it yeah. that's something I know we've tossed around an email is pulling in some people this year mm -hmm. to do some guided walks so I have the knowledge I can work on the stage right <laughs> <laughs> it would be really it would be really neat to um, do that so I mean think about it you don't have to okay. decide right now but it would be great to get some of those on the books too All and right. we could definitely bring some awareness to the Gould Trail and mm -hmm. maybe Midcoast would want to join and talk about it and talk about what they're working on yeah. um, I know you saw my email they said that they're yeah. gonna they'll keep me in the loop or keep us in the loop about mm -hmm what's going on and what they need. They don't need a letter of support right now. Um, Anna left Midcoast, so mm -hmm. they're in the middle of a transition too. Okay. But um, I'm just gonna keep touching base and making sure they don't yeah. need anything from us and I'll keep us all updated. And Aaron, if you hear anything on your end, just I'll let us know. We pass it along. Yeah, okay. Um, and finally, what three things should we track this year? Now, I do want to kick one off um, because it can, it can mean a lot of things. What should we track? The thing that I definitely want to track this year is litter at the Madonna River Rest Area. It continues to be a, a huge problem out of all the parks. I, and so... I, yeah, I yeah. went yesterday, or this morning actually. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I stopped off there on my way to Dameron Scott Hardware and yeah, sure enough, there were half a dozen things that I had to pick up. Yeah, it's, it's always a mess. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I if the Dunkin' Donuts closed, half that litter would disappear. I mean, and it just Chinese wouldn't food. be there. I cleaned up a lot of Chinese food wrappers. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, like well. the soy sauce packets and hamster food. Now there is no trash barrel there or anything, right? No. And they say if you put it there, it gets even worse. Yeah. Have we yeah. tried? Has it been tried? Well, yeah, John okay. has. Yeah, and, and they it became a, they abused it. Okay. People yeah. Would, yeah, people st stop with a household trash yes. and start right. pumping it in there. No. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. yeah, they were leaving tires beside it and everything else. And yeah. Can yeah. Quite or even people, you know, on a trip somewhere will stop for yeah. something and they'll leave whatever they've got trash in there. It's just. Yeah. Okay. So if if you think about it, I know Steve does it. I've been popping in, um, like every other week, I try to just make a round to the parks and do a little pickup. So if you think about it, anyone has extra free time, yeah. it takes about five minutes to stop at that park. But if you could just keep, if we could keep checking in on email about like how much we're cleaning up there. Okay. And I'm gonna try to bring some more awareness on social media and- Would a sign help? Would a 
thinking, is there a way to word a sign where you create a little bit of guilt, but you're not too forceful about yeah, it? Yeah, didn't we talk about that? <laughs> right now, we can't we can remember if we talked about forceful. a literary sign. I know that we're also getting the kayak portage put in, and, oh, Max, don't make that face. <laughs> and I'm hoping, like, maybe that will attract some new park visitors that, you know, the more, clean up. more people we have there, maybe. I just really hope that we put that floating dock in and someone doesn't trash it. Mm. That's my hope. Mm -hmm. That's what I fear. That's why I had the face, and that's why I'm scared as we get very, very close to this, that we're going to put it in, and then within one week, someone does something stupid like dig it up or something, and then it goes down the fish ladder. Yeah. I may have to, like, put in a watchtower or something. I was wondering, river, like, do we need to consider a trail camera time. on it? Would that... Yeah, we, we could do camera. Bad idea. If it gets really... Out of hand yeah, the way the way to do the way to do the camera is have something that's like really really obvious, that's a fake camera. Yes. And then some pointed at that fake camera is a real camera that's hidden off in the bush, bushes, <laughs> you know, so that you can. Okay. I'm impressed. Give the vandals yeah, a target yeah, and then catch them. On the other one. As on they the do one. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. These are all good ideas. So just be thinking about this for our next idea. meeting. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll have a litter quantity update. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, well, I don't know, maybe it's because you were there cleaning up too. But, um, yeah, I was I was kind of surprised because, I well, I think I emailed you a couple, three weeks ago, three or four weeks yeah, ago, that I'd good. gotten a couple of big bags out. Yeah. And, um, and I was really surprised that there wasn't more when I stopped by this morning because, you know, been a, been a while. So yeah. And I'm not opposed to trying a trash barrel again, really, to just to try. Because um, I think that would help. You yeah. might get some abuse, but you also could eliminate people just throwing it on the ground too. So you might take a look at the place and see if there's a place where you could put a trash barrel that couldn't be seen as you drive by, you'd have to be in the park to see it. Yeah. That's it. I yeah. wonder too, you know, sometimes at the car Don't washes, like they tree. have those trash lids that you can, there's only a certain size you can fit in it, that it's metal, oh, yeah. you know, and you can't well, take the top that's off. That's what yeah. I was thinking of, like, or, or were those wooden ones that are the same, they're locked up, so you can only mm -hmm. throw some stuff in there. And, yeah. yeah like, you see that at McDonald's a lot, the yeah. ones with the, the wooden slats and the... Yeah, yep. yeah, or some yeah something that limits what you could get put in there at any one given moment. Yeah, see somebody right. standing there for two hours. Yeah, because so. I think it makes sense to have it there because most parks do have something like that where people park. So yeah. Okay. Then and the then, you, then the question becomes who's responsible for monitoring it and emptying it? Because it, yeah. it's public works. Once right? you have once you have a trash can, <laughs> it's going to have to be a regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a regular maintenance task. Well, I might know somebody at Public Works that could probably check it weekly. Mm -hmm. um, well, don't they have to go to um, um, Friendship Street and empty those regularly? No, they don't do the... That's contracted out. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. So is that something you want to talk about with the... Or do you want to move forward with that now? I mean, I think we can get that done pretty easy. So... So if we make a motion to... Would be the time of year to do it before the the trap before it becomes used a great deal. Yeah, right. All right. Anyone want to make a motion for that? I will. A second. Sure, nothing bigger than an envelope. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, like that. Well, it's gonna it's oh, gonna Duncan have to Dillman's be boxes. able to take a big big gulp cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll use that as our guide. To yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's exciting. Um, is there anything else? Some. So that was just one thing to track. Does anyone have other things? The uh, hemlock or yeah. South forest. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to be yeah, obvious, but <laughs> yes, but we definitely. Need to track yeah. Especially if we're able to do things and we're able to earn, do some fundraising and follow through with that. We need to get in 
constant report. Yeah, that's a pretty important item right now. Mm -hmm. with, with, you even see Carl, he, he had heard about it through uh, what we've done, so it's, it's garnered a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. well, it was in the paper, that great yeah. well, paper. I was really surprised because I just came to speak to the select board about the grant, to just get permission to spend the grant, and um, when you were like, oh, great, right up in the paper, I texted William and I was like, because I don't have um, you know a membership, and I was like, what's she talking about? I haven't seen it. <laughs> and it I read good? it and I thought he did a really nice job. You Excellent. touched on the great, on the, on the really important points about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good. It gets the ball rolling. And he did um, reach out to me and he is definitely interested in doing a, a lengthier interview good. Um, when we're ready. I told him I'd like the weather to warm up and to actually do it in the forest so we can get some pictures and pictures of the nursery. And um, mm -hmm. after the, you know, I think she's doing the treatment now if not next week so mm -hmm. and I'd like to add that um, I like the lunch and learn idea you had and but rather than think of the first place as Dutch Neck which certainly would be a good place but those trails are in rough shape of course the town forest needs some work too but I'd like to focus our first you know event trail event at the town forest so that we can talk about the Lily Indulgence so we can really hype it up and then we're going to say we're going to be taking donations, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way you're doing the first spiel, the first um, public, um, you know, uh, uh, in-person, you know, talk about it at the place itself. Mm -hmm. And certainly on a weekend, there's enough tra there's enough parking. Yeah. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. I don't know if any of you have frequented the trail recently, but um, it's gotten really bad in the last year, and even on the main entrance going in, even to the nursery, like mud goes a halfway up my bean boot in, in significant spots. So when I think about bringing not just five people there, but 20 people there, the damage it's gonna do to the trail, right. and that's just in one spot. There's multiple areas where there's just no footbridge or no alternate way. And you can see people, they're going like out through the woods and making new trails and I saw a little hemlock was bent back and you know so we really if that's our focus then we need to commit to doing some serious trail work mm -hmm. and um, I feel alone in that sometimes at the town forest I drag my husband out there to help me when I need something chainsawed but and I've tried to work on the footbridges that it, are, exist but to do the m major creation of the footbridges we need now mm -hmm. it's an do undertaking. We, do we have access to materials for footbridges? I would need to. We haven't thought about it. Yeah, I haven't really. Yeah, we haven't I've just been trying to it. get the grant and the, arbor, I've been working with Max just to try to get the arborist there to get the pesticide treatment moving forward. And then right. now I think probably need to go out and measure and see how long these bridges need to be and get a quote from a lumber yard and see. And I think Joan gave me the name of somebody that I think, I want to say it's Hancock or maybe it might be somewhere else that Normally, is good to nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if don't know. if store is, but they did donate a little bit to the um, uh, the Who's Waldo the, Theater at one point. Who's the one that did the um, children's gardens at the uh, farmers? Oh, market? that was That's NC Hunt. NC Hunt. Right. Yeah. Um, they're, they're very community minded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And we did have, you know, Public Works came up and they got some trees down for us and they've done a lot of work and so we do appreciate that thank you well if we can get materials i'm happy to to hammer nails drill yeah, yeah. and the carrying all. out I, we need volunteers to help carry this all yeah carrying all place. these materials so, out it's a and we might want to do it at a drier time of year but yeah we're not even into mud season and yeah. it's going to be mud season yeah. <laughs> and it was wet Starting it's Thursday. Pretty bad throughout last year. It, it never, trailing. yeah, it never seemed to get much better. Um, yeah, we may want to hold off on that. So, I mean, we could maybe do the first footbridge so we could get people out to the nurt. But I, I also don't want to encourage people to keep walking and and damage. And I have it done. Yeah, I have it ready for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll have something? to think. We'll table that for now. No, I was just thinking like uh, if we could build them off site. If you just had measurements. Yeah. Ooh. And if uh, we, like could, we could do that, then again, you might be able to, to involve public works because it is, it is town property. Um, and, you know, they need rainy day projects sometimes. So, yeah. well, that's not it's a bad an idea. You know? So it'd be like modular, like eight foot sections yeah. or something? If we could do that, if that's practical. I mean, yeah. 
because they could build them and haul them. And what are you thinking, like, like two by tens side by side with four by fours, something similar? Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I have some pictures that the, of the bridges that Thomaston Town Forest has done. They're beautiful um, and I think practical. <laughs> So I'll send you some pictures of those. I'm actually going over for a visit tomorrow, so I'll take some more pictures so you oh, can right. kind of see. Yeah, I think it would look. I think it will look. It looks so nice in their forest. I mm -hmm. think it would look nice in ours too. Well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and is there a third thing anyone's interested in? Yeah. I'd kind of like the, the blueberry field the, the, oh, yeah. to work on that event as we. Lot of potential there to gather public interest in the commission and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we need to um, get in touch with the fire department to confirm their interest in taking it up to burn be controlled burns up there um, yeah there's a lot of potential up there so if it is here we could just track the use you know kind of get the signage back up there again let people know it's open for use uh, Work out our raking rules. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that I note it here. Do we lift that? Do we talk with the town and the select board about lifting that this year? And then if we do that, do we try to get volunteers up there to monitor it for so many hours of a day? Because the whole nerve is that somebody's going to go up there to collect them for profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we could just randomly have people pop in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, because I mean, it'd be hard because you can yeah, schedule be certain days to be there, but. But you could, yeah, you as you drive by to go somewhere else, you could stop in. And yeah. We could, you know, get somebody so that once a day or once every two days, somebody's stopping there. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think I we just want to see, like, some commitments, some verbal commitments. Like, I'll definitely check it on Tuesday and Thursday, and I'll, you know. Right. So we'll work on that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, um, uh, we check it pre you know, we're up there pretty once or twice a week with Public Works anyway. anyway. Yeah. We drive up there and... And there is a yeah, because blueberry, that's another litter. Yep. Yeah, there is a blueberry weekend in July. We talked to Lincoln County about it last yes. year, right? Lincoln County News. So we should probably try to, as much, I mean, we're at the mercy of when the blueberries are ready. Right. But I know. as much as possible, last year their weekend was a little bit late compared to when our blueberries were ready. But if we can do that, that would be some nice cross promotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that sounds great. I think those are three really strong focuses for the year. Um, meeting schedule. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we're. We're probably okay. fine. You got thirty minutes. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Um, the meeting schedule. We kind of touched on this. I just kind of put some preliminary thoughts. Like, should we transition to a quarterly or every other month meeting? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the meeting part of it is just getting the motions and the votes in to move forward with things. A lot right. of the discussions we've been doing through email mm -hmm. to keep each other in the loop. Um, and in lieu of meetings, should we schedule cleanup? trail and park work dates with each other each month so i just wanted to kind of put the feelers out to see how everybody's feeling about that mm -hmm. and if we did take this step are we gonna like act on this commitment with each other to meet up and do the work mm -hmm. i think we yes. should change the meeting time certainly the bylaws and again the bylaws were originally taken from the um, main the MEAC, main association of conservation commissions yeah and they had their meetings it's like no less than two meetings each month. Yeah. It's like, wow, we, don't we do that. should. When change. did they ever get any work done? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they had to quite a few more members than we do. But uh, I think we need to um, change it in the bylaws. So, whatever we decide here, we should vote on it and make a change to the bylaws so that it reflects it. Mm -hmm. Because right. no less than two each month. I yeah. didn't even remember that that was there. I know. I read it and I was like, I don't remember that. But, um, <laughs> The, I know that we definitely need a meeting in June because that will act out like, I mean, I, we can talk about it, the Blueberry event and the things, but we need, we'll need a June meeting to vote on yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. I'm sure of it. And so to I, arrange who does what. And yeah, so I'm like sure that. we need a June meeting. And then from there, I, like, I really think we probably could go quarterly with meetings. Um, yes. I, I think don't know. We could, I think quarterly is a good and plan. Monthly. And then a monthly and, clean and, and then every month we're doing something on the, yeah. and on the trails, and we don't always have to be doing it at the same time because we could ask to have volunteers help us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm open. I think I'm open. To, I think what I would love to see, if you guys were open, is that we're setting a date, even if it's every month or every other month, that we are actively trying as a group to meet at a location and do some work together because mm -hmm. many hands make light work. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see all of you. Mm -hmm. um, and then... 
And in addition to that, whenever all one of us is out, letting you know, letting us know, so we can advertise that on our Facebook, try to get volunteers. If you're around, we can join. Yeah. But, um, and on that, so if we try to schedule some for the group, is Saturday or Sunday is better for you, Rachel, at this point? At this point, Sundays are better. Okay. I have school every other Saturday. Oh, that's just exciting. And I will say, with this plan of doing more trail cleanups and less meetings, we just might get Garvin involved. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. He's more of a doer, less yeah. of a talker. So I was telling, I was at um, a, a Mid Coast New England Mountain Bike Association meeting, and well. that's what they were like. They like like to be out on the trails, getting stuff done, uh -huh. and less meeting times. And yeah. like I love that, and. I think probably that's, I think we're in good shape. I, I think we needed the meetings we had last year and now we're ready to move on to the next steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, he left, but. So do we need to make, make motions? For yeah, we should change video. the bylaws. Well, yeah, that can come down when we actually get to the bylaws. But from what I'm understanding, you're gonna move to quarterly or bi-monthly? Quarterly meetings. Quarterly. Especially going into the summer, aim for monthly work groups. Yeah. Right. Well, and I think the other part of that, to your benefit, is that um, that's just something we need to have on the calendar so that if people are saying, "When's the next conservation commission meeting?" we can say that. But you could certainly plan another meet, like like with the Warren Law. Right. You know, they need they need to have one of these types of sessions within the next like three months. Yeah. We can always schedule the last one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I agree with that. I think yeah. it's doable when if somebody needs us to get together to discuss something. But sure, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and we'll try it. Maybe we'll get through a couple of them and say we need more and go to bi monthly. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can choose. You could decide by email, and then you could ratify it mm -hmm. at the next meeting. So you yeah, you agree. You that's make true. the motion. Everybody votes on it, and it's really not an official vote because you hadn't been in a meeting, but you ratify it when you get to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. yeah, that seems good. Um, do we need to wait for Will to make a motion on that change? So there's so few of us. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could start looking at the bylaws in general. Yeah. Um, see if there's anything else that needs changes. Well, maybe, I know because the bylaws was his he wanted to add that, so I don't want to jump into that. So I, if you don't mind, I'll just kind of keep it. Oh, we're waiting for you to make a motion so we can make a motion. Oh. <laughs> All right. Does someone want to make a motion? I make a motion that we change section five of the bylaws, of the five, seven of the bylaws that says meetings. And it says the commission shall hold quarterly meetings. And change that no less than two meetings to quarterly meetings. And except when a quorum as defined is not present. I think we skip the quorum part because we'll just there, there's a, a statement other in another place where it says that you need a quorum to do the votes. I think the commission shall hold quarterly meetings and as defined in the article eight, well, as defined in article eight and get rid of that not present at all because it, that's defined in article eight, the quorum. So I guess we could keep those statements, but I don't think we really need them. And I would also like to change, well, I guess one thing at a time. So I make a motion that we change the commission shall hold quarterly meetings as defined, I guess you do have to say, except when a quorum is defined is not present. I guess you have to keep that part in there. So the motion is to change section seven of the bylaws to reflect the need for quarterly meetings instead of monthly. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Is there a second? I have a second. All in favor? I also have another change to the bylaws that I'd like to. Okay. That um, because we have only five members and maybe as many as seven, I think Robert's rules of order is really for a large group. 
And I think what we work with right here is consensus. So I'd rather say that um, um, that um, a consensus rules of order. Consensus rule of order. Order. Can you shall explain govern. the difference? That should be we'll probably wait until the actual bylaw discussion, right? Yeah, I think we will. Well, we're into it now, aren't we? Um, I think we were just talking about. We just had one more of, um, I guess, yeah, we can move into that because we agreed to the cleanup trail and park work dates. I'll send out some with dates through email. Okay. So now we are at review the bylaws. Um, and can you, I am not familiar with the difference between consensus and Robert's rules. Robert's rules of order is, is a bit more formal. It's, it's pretty formal and it's meant to maintain order. Um, you often have Robert's Rules of Order when you have 20 board members or 15 board members and people start talking over one another and, mm -hmm. um, and you want At to... At which point you have to have a gavel. Right. <laughs> and that's where Don't the chairman comes in and says... Oh, you know, oh Max. So please. Robert's Rules of Order is pretty formal. He's got one. <laughs> yeah. oh, no Maxwell's one silver hammer. You've been holding out on me. It's wooden. And no one's requested it. <laughs> but it's when you have a larger group and things get uh, unruly at times, things people talk over one another, and there's a whole bunch of now I recognize you to the floor and you may speak and now you may, and, and it's a bit formal. Yeah. I think what we're doing right here is consensus. It's the rule of consensus. She's right. And that's the formal yeah. um, discussion. So I would change the uh, second um, sentence in the seven meetings to um, consensus rule of order, consensus rule of order shall govern meeting procedure when not in conflict with statutes or bylaws. Notice of these will be given by the secretary. Okay. So I would just say consensus rule of order shall govern meeting procedure. Is that a motion on your end, Karen? That's a motion on my end. I second. I second. Rachel you beat you to it, Steve. Okay. All right. I win. Yeah, keep talking. Keep doing that. You're gonna lose it by the end of the day. You know they never gave one to me at the auction gallery because I got a little too gavel happy okay. too. Um, does, is there anything else that anyone would like to change or bring to light in the bylaws? Um. The meeting part was the part that really stood out to me, right. so I'm yeah. glad that we've got that adjusted. And um, I don't know if it matters in this part, but um, in this, it says name and purpose is the first thing, name and purpose, and nowhere does it say our mission statement is, it's, it's purpose. Do we want our mission statement in the bylaws, or is the name and the purpose in the bylaws fine and the mission statement something separate? I'm not sure. It doesn't have to be in the bylaws, actually, yeah. I don't believe. I think this is some, I, I'm interested in pursuing this more, where we talked about like mission, vision, statement, or, or, or what we're charged with, what the purpose is. You know, this is something we need to clarify. Clarify, yeah, I agree with you. So, again, we can think about that. Yeah. We can all think about that and see what we want to do. Um, this may not be the meeting to make that decision. Yeah, I think everyone, let's spend some time thinking about that. We can bring it up again um, in June when we meet. So I think the purpose here was to have a very simple statement here, but have a mission statement that you can share when you do press releases, when yes. you do brochures, when you do you know website, yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I agree with you. Karen. Maybe all we need to do is someplace in that name and purpose put mission put, statement. Put is. write a write a mission statement. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's possible. And then you were, um, Will was talking about the term limits and. Um, um, before we go too far, I think the terms are in the back, but also the. The elections. Elections and officers. Yeah. See, there's the secretary yeah, and a right. treasurer and we don't have yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that we never right. really had. Just, just say president, vice president, really that's all you need. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, we should just strike mm -hmm. those out of there because it's kind of. It seems a bit overkill. Any elections? So we're
like take the whole secretary section out? Yeah, and and treasurer. Is that and treasurer. The, because of the because the town handles our money. And I'm pretty much your secretary. Yeah, you are. We got a secretary. Well, we appreciate you, Max. <laughs> so just strike the just secretary the whole, and treasurer and go paragraph. with chair, vice chair. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, so we'll need a motion for that too. Okay. So we're striking the whole paragraph above. Yeah, I make a motion that we strike the paragraph referring to secretary and treasurer. Second. Section three. Section three. All in favor? All right. You got it. So. So now we're under the yeah, terms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Term length. So, Will, you were suggesting two years instead of three? I think two years is, okay. is uh, more attractive to a lot of people. Because yeah. I know a lot of people that I've talked to that it's, it's intimidating to see two, five, four years, even three, really. I mean, just, you don't know what life's going to throw at you. So it's a lot easier to attract people if it's like, oh, two years and you're done, and we only have quarterly meetings. So that could only be eight meetings you have to go to. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that a motion? Where, what number is that? That's a motion. Where is it? Oh, that's in the, in the elections. Section two, two of the elections. Oh, Members shall be appointed initially for terms of one, two, and three years. But that's so that you know the whole board isn't there for one year yeah. to be elected. Um, their successor shall be appointed for terms of three years each. So that's what you would be amending. Oh, okay. Two years. And the first, the f we'd have to amend. Members shall be appointed initially for terms of one. That's when that's when the commission. That's when we start. I right. know, so, so that, that we stagger. So right, that doesn't matter anymore. Just, just because we haven't we're followed two-year terms. <laughs> only, right? Okay. Right. So it would initially be two-year terms, and then it would, if you wanted to renew, it would be a three-year term, or if you. We would just reduce the year that everyone has right now to two years. So right, and we'll tell everyone whose terms up. Oh, well, we just got Rachel last year. Yeah. <laughs> Except Rachel. Except yeah. Rachel. She's got to stay on longer. Okay. So th we're just changing this, the sentence which says, their successors shall be appointed for terms of two years each. Yeah. So, Will, was that your motion? That's my motion. Second? I second. I beat you. All in favor? All right. <laughs> Oh, you see then two the, in elections. We've got to strike out. The following officers should be elected. Chair, yeah. vice chair, and then s and we, scratch yep, the secretary and treasury, and we already yeah. voted on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Associate members are honorary members. When we used to, when Joan Ray was um, here with the land trust, she used to sit in on all our meetings, but she didn't have voting, the right to vote. Mm -hmm. But oh. she was in all our meetings because there was so much land and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we don't really need to change anything. No, we don't need to change that. Yeah. Committees. Now, these committees, we've never had all these committees. We were lucky we had a board. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. but we can leave this in there. It's kind of we're all on every committee. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think it's a good um, way of trying to separate the functions. Yeah, yeah, and if ever it were to come up and we had to go that route, I think that's good to keep there. in. Mm -hmm. Clearing and acquisition. Yeah, we're actually, all of us are all of those committees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Information and education it would be nice. committee. <laughs> right, and they're just dormant until the commission does a vote to do something with them. Right. How about pollution control and land use regulation? That's, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. And the quorum, since there's five of us, three of us would be a quorum, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a majority of members shall constitute a quorum. So if there's five of us, three of us can vote. If three of us show up for a meeting, we can vote on things. Oh. But if we get one more member, <laughs> then we'd have to have four. Yep, then we'd okay. have to have four. You're right. Okay. okay. And again, we can, uh, it is legal in the state of Maine to vote online for something and then ratify it at a future meeting. Yep. Okay. Yes. And the one warning I'll give is that. Oh. That's 
Thank you. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Great. I, I don't think any of you are going to do anything illegal during that. I mean, what was going to be discussed? Uh, we should use this trail marker on this one site here, and there are three members. <laughs> one person sued the town because the trail wasn't marked. <laughs> Yeah. Um, great. So I think we're good to move forward with that. So we're going to touch base at the next meeting about the name and purpose thing. So if we need to touch base on anything else, we can. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move in. I'll just do a quick update on the town forest because I think I've probably sent enough emails <laughs> about what's going on. But um, as you that. think, good Ooh. thanks. Um, as you heard, the select board approved that we could spend our grant money um, on the treatment. The treatment was significantly, the, the estimate she sent us was significantly more than we were expecting. So I think, I don't have the exact, part, well actually I might actually have the invoice here. Um, yeah, was it 20,000? 20, it's like 20, well all in, I think it was like 28,000, right Max? Yeah. Um, so we, we got 10,000, so we still have to raise another 18,000, but then if we want to do any significant trail work there and for other trails, you know, that's what I was saying. Like, right. we probably should try to aim for twenty to twenty-five thousand. Um, so I, I talked with the arborist, and she said it's completely doable um, to do a two-part treatment where we treat what we can this year. So as we agreed as a commission that we um, treat the most dire of trees, mm -hmm. along with the like hopefully the oldest, because I think are the most important in there, um, and then spring twenty twenty-three our aim and hope is that we'll have the money to do the second treatment or the final bit of treatment and the, the pesticide's good for, uh, for four years? I think she said four years. Okay, four or five years. Or so, residual. yeah, and we can, you know, we'll talk again. We'll, I mean, we'll keep a pulse on it. We'll talk again and see what we need to do and I'll be in touch with the state entomologist because she said, you know, the pesticide is just to help um, while the biocontrol numbers build up. So we'll see where we're at. I know she's, I mean, she's hoping to eventually harvest beetles from that site. So I know that she's going to keep, keep an eye. Um, so that's great. Um, uh, talked with Max a little bit about grants, trying to find some grants for that money. And then touching on the educational walks and maybe doing it by donation with this year, all proceeds going to the town forest. I mean, anything you guys think of that we can do just... Every little bit helps. I know thirty-one dollars at our clink account is only thirty-one dollars, but guess what? That dwindles the number down. So can we have some kind of an ongoing fundraiser like the food bank just did with their van? You know, like yeah. just, what was that? Oh, they just raised money for a van for the food bank, and so it's like one of those things where the thermometer fills up. You know, so we could put our oh, number okay. there, and mm -hmm. just it's an ongoing thing. And if people want to donate, yeah. they can and yep. build it up. I thought maybe mentioning on Earth Day because that's the, the day of the year that people normally are looking to do something. We mm -hmm. could put something on face. If we had an, something set up, I can talk with Max and Peg about what the verbiage needs to be and what it needs to be. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, so if anyone wants to make a donation. Yeah, I think if you put a donation request on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. that's yeah. something. And, and, you know, rerun it once a quarter or once a month or something mm -hmm. like that. Or every time we have an event of something, if we have the events <laughs> and maybe I don't know if donate donation jars are passe since people still aren't really going that many places mm -hmm. but certainly having something at the town hall where people could give a donation they do um, all right in grocery stores they, I work at a co-op and man we rake in a lot of money for places like that yeah. we'd have to think of where we could get donation jars and have it be effective I don't know, maybe the library is starting to have more events and things like that. They often help out, you know, although that they're trying to get their own donations. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the kicker there. Um, yeah. If we can think of any other fundraisers. Just is Waldoro Day having, happening? Yeah, we'll hmm? yeah. Yeah. Is Waldoro Day happening? Could we have some there? Well, <laughs> Caitlin right um, put it yeah. Thing out for to have a meet a Waldoro Day meeting. She said at least if we could have a parade and some kids games, but she put the message out to have a meeting, uh, like Friday night, late Friday night, to have the meeting Monday evening here. Oh, and I didn't even get the message. Oh, you know, I, know. I, I was I, looked, I was disappointed about that because I was interested in, in hearing about it and I, I couldn't make know it. about it. Yeah, well, it happened. Yeah. I don't know that it even happened. She's there were no replies. Yeah. Oh. There were a bunch of likes. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. She get a whole. She get like 900 likes, yeah. no replies. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I won't be there, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what have you heard, Max, about Walter Day? Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just hearing that is so sad. Yeah. Like everyone's all for it, but no one's gonna show up to a meeting. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, Val. Well, welcome like, to the Garden Club. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's like a Garden Club and the Conservation Commission. What we're doing right now, every like everyone wants to see, see the town forest safe. Who's donating to that? Yeah. yeah. Well, for four years, Edward managed Walderboro Day, and and he's the one who organized it into spreadsheets. And vendors weren't paying us anything. We got not zip, zip from vendors. He took over, and he. He made them give twenty dollars. By the time I took over, from the high-end vendors, I was getting fifty dollars and twenty, and I wasn't letting them leave unless they gave me some. Before that, wow. they, they were getting nothing. And um, I mean, Edward ran it for four years. I ran it for five years. And to get people to help with the kids' games or to help, with, you know, and he'd say, "Take this section, that section," and just getting people was pulling. The only ones that showed up were the firemen and the public works department and the policemen. I mean. It was the town that did it, and um, you would eventually get people uh, to show up, uh, paint the f face painting. One year, a group would do it, and the next year they wouldn't do it, and it was it was hit or miss. Sometimes, sometimes there were no Boy Scouts. Sometimes there were no Girl Scouts. Sometimes there were. Sometimes. Well, okay. <laughs> Every year was like pulling teeth, and uh, and then we had to move it to Eighty Gray School. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. This town needs a herald yeah. bill. <laughs> it's like no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. We're well, so gonna close, wanna... so I just wanna. Um, so, please be thinking about great ways that we can bring some funds in um, that don't require planning a full event because we have to have to be mindful of each other's time and energy mm -hmm. and what I think we're taking on a lot. We have a lot to do this year. Um, um, and we just, I discussed the trail work needed earlier, so we've kind of got a pulse on that. Would it right be legal to do a GoFundMe page for a Well, I think we could set, I, I, I think we set something up for the town. Like a, yeah. It'll be through GoFundMe. Yeah. Like a donation jar right out here. Yeah, we, we can talk more about that with Peg, though. Yeah. yeah. Setting that type of thing up. Yeah, I think yeah, that's good. Because that's the other thing is if we do walks, like it would be nice to have an Eventbrite page where people could pay the five dollar donation and go right into our account. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to move on because I just want to touch base with the um, planning and priorities list, and I want to review that while we we're all here tonight. Um, I don't know if everyone got a chance to look at it. Um, yeah, do we have dates for the shellfish committee? Not yet. We're yeah. setting them Thursday. Oh, okay. So, so you'd email. Yep, I'll yeah, I'll email. So we'll email them, and then um, just like we did last year, Rachel, were you on the, you weren't with us yet then, right? Spring? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I feel like it was midsummer when yeah. I joined here. So for, just so you know, what last year what we did is the Shellfish Committee has four, four or five dates that they do cleanups in town, and each one of us took a date last year, so the Conservation Commission was represented at each cleanup. Um, this year I am interested, and this is where I was hoping you would be interested too, I'd like to talk to the um, Shellfish Committee about maybe us buying bottled water or coffee or, you know, whatever. I don't know what they're interested in, but doing something like that if they were interested. Beer. <laughs> I don't know if we can use that. Uh, I don't know if we can spend that, but would you... What's the point is to just make our presence known? Yes. Yeah, just like, hi, the Wilder World Conservation Commission is helping, and here's a nice... Hot cup of coffee yeah, at 7 a.m. They always have a table set up with this, you know, the select board, Jan Minzy and and uh, Bob Butler and Reese Brock. They they've all donated time at the table, signing, you know, getting where people are going and all that. And so we could just have like a little table of coffee set up for the guys to show up. People. I think you could just grab a couple boxes of Joes. Yeah. They're like twelve dollars a box of Joe. Donate mm -hmm. them. Maybe. I've always, I, I, that's my thing with the shellfish cleanup is I've wanted to get businesses involved in it because it really is a benefit to them too because yeah. uh, they clean up a lot. I mean, we, we do it, we fill a dump truck each time with trash. And so if we could get businesses to donate to that, that'd be great. I have a that's whole, I have stacks and stacks of um, coffee cups with lids. Oh, great. From the Waldboro Business Association. Where I was, uh -huh. We were running all our events and I do have the coffee urn 
because then we can buy the Dunkin' Donuts stuff. When you buy the box of Joe at Dunkin's, they give you the creamer, the sugar, the stirrers, the cups, and everything. And I, I don't think Are the cups too. Yeah, the, oh. if you do the box, of, and it's like, I don't know, fifteen cups of coffee, twelve, fifteen cups of coffee. Mm. But I don't think you need like if we did two box of Joes at every one. I don't think you're gonna need much more than that because not everyone's gonna take a cup. Right. But it's just that nice like. Yeah, that you're doing something. Something for them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I that's a great idea. I, I, I wouldn't use a cup. I, uh, IV. I would use yeah. IV, <laughs> not a cup. No. So, you want to make a motion for that? I know that was your idea. To what? Bring refreshments? To yeah, that we can so we I can purchase. Yeah, I, I'll make the motion that we allocate funds to purchase refreshments for the shelter's cleanups. Okay. I second. All right, second. Or oh yeah, well I third. <laughs> Steve, they're just beating you to the I second know, today. I just slow to react suddenly. Okay. Um, All those in favor. Oh, sorry. All those in oh. favor? I'm, I'm like watching the time, like trying to. Oh, run. you're okay. Um, the Quarry Hill blueberry picking event. So we can talk about that in more detail at our next mm -hmm. event. But I'm going to see which, I can't remember if it was the third or fourth weekend that the, you know, the local blueberry event is, or main blueberry event is. So I'm going to check with that. And we kind of already talked about that. Um, do we want to provide blueberry boxes again last year? Every single one we bought was gone. We were, and they were asking and we didn't have more down here. So I think maybe we need to look at actually getting more this year. Um, I think that's a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. It is. It was neat. We got some great pictures online mm -hmm. of people taking pictures and sharing. Um, Perhaps that one could have a little thing right next to it, like donate, like, they're free, Oh yeah, but that's a great idea. Donate. Yes. yes. Suggested donation. Okay. Um, so we can talk about a more formal event at the next meeting, and I'll keep it, you in loop an email of the weekend. And then we can discuss the no-raking rule at the next Maybe meeting. Maybe you have to pay to rake. That would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then someone has got to be there to check, check on it, you know? Yeah. 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 OK. So I'm going to just cruise by that, because I know we're talking about it at our next meeting. Um, and this one, very quickly, the cons come, the fall cleanup. I think it went well for the first year, it being rainy day and it being the first day of hunting season. We yeah. still had a decent, you know, we still had a decent turnout. Um, so I'm just suggesting that we make it October, the weekend before, so either the Saturday or Sunday, to avoid the conflict of hunting season. Mm -hmm. And I think setting up at Madomic River Rest Area for exposure worked really well, and that we should just repeat that this year. Um, does everyone feel good about that? I yes. do. Yep. I, I would Since feel better about a Sunday again. Okay. That'll be cross country time. For okay. Kids. Okay. That's the place that needs the most cleanup, so it's a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, I, my, so my questions were like, are there other events we would like to do, which we kind of talked about in email about the education trail walks. And um, the other thing is, before we just throw out a bunch of ideas, like do we feel as a commission we're available for this time, like that we can plan it adequately, that we can staff it, you know, that we can be there and that we can afford it. So I just want to keep that in mind if we're going to add anything okay, else. So that's year. something we can just throw back and forth on email. Yeah, I think okay. so. Does everyone else feel good about that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think we'll all have limited chances to do it. But, you know, if you lead four events a year or lead walks four times during the season, it gets press. People get out there. You never, in all the times with the land trust and all the years that I've led walks, I think... 10 people were the most we ever had at one walk, yeah. and then generally it was four to six. Okay. And are you interested in leading a walk this year? I'll lead a walk, but uh, don't expect a lot of activity out of me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting old and fat. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> okay. That's kind of what I'm hunting for now is like, okay, if we're going to do this, who are the people that are willing to help and lead the walks so that we can start setting dates and start advertising? Because without leaders, we've got nothing. Um, I think I would love to, although Dutch Neck is certainly in my neck of the woods, I would want to do the pocket park walk. I'd like to okay. take people walks to see the owl wives, uh, yeah. you know, but that's like Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> it's coming up too quick. Yeah, yeah that is. That's but that's neat. not, I'm, I might be up for that because that's a lot of flat walking. Yeah, <laughs> it might be neat. You could probably do that twice in the summer too, you know, like, oh. Uh, even in a late afternoon one when the sun's going down, that'd be really pretty. Mm -hmm. and the, the only thing is that Liz reminded me that there is on the walk out on the rocks where you go to where the fish ladder is, 
there's poison ivy. So oh, you yeah, either yeah. have to mark it or um, uh, there's part of the trail you can walk without touching it, but you'd have to make sure everybody did a single file through there. So I've got some of those red flags you put in the ground. So okay, is it, that's private property though, right? Yeah. Okay, but so they, let, they don't mind you walking out there to see it as long as but you don't bother it's, their house. It's not is it private or is, it, is that water, no. uh, water company? Oh, yeah. It, that's it's a water company um, where that building was and yeah. where the other thing is. But, but the rocks, I think, belong to the people. Oh, do they? The, yeah, it's farther down the, up the yeah, street. Yeah, because there's that other broken down building yep. that torn up. That's private property. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what the, what the easement is from the river. Yeah, that's yeah. That probably doesn't extend all the way up to the street. No. So. Yeah. But, but they don't mind. They don't mind. They, I think they enjoy the fact that people enjoy it. And it's not overused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, maybe if we make people aware of it, it might be overused. But yeah. Yeah. Nice to figure out a way to make the path wider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice, too, to do, like, it doesn't have to be a lunch and learn, but even an evening. Like, we have the beautiful picnic tables at the, at the landing. It'd be nice to find somebody who would just come and speak while people, I don't know, have their Enjoy. have a bite to eat or just hang out. Um, I think there's some possibility there. So mm -hmm. everyone just be thinking about who you know and who you can get to come do it for free for us because <laughs> they love their, their town. Um, okay, and then the fundraising, trail work, et cetera, I just kind of detailed, like, this is what we've all talked about and what we're working towards. Mm -hmm. um, so you can review that. I don't think we need to go through that right now. We're out of time, so... Um, okay. You can just email me any updates you have. Or put, like, yeah, this, so what I'll plan is um, after the Shellfish Committee meets, I'll reach out with an email of dates so we can all grab a date. If anyone else is available this weekend for the Waldebro Historical Society cleanup, please come out. Will and I will be there. What date is that? Saturday, right? Uh, it's on Sunday. It's on oh, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday what? Time. I'd have to check the time. Yeah. At the yeah. Historical Society, I'm yeah. assuming. Oh, yeah, right. we brought, I think they ended up with a wheelbarrow. We brought some tools down, and they just tell you what they need, and you go clean it up. It was nice. Um, cleaned up some litter in their bushes last year. And Okay. Um, I don't know, I don't know the if that was meeting, enough. The next meeting will be um, June. 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 The first Tuesday in June. Sunday. I missed it. This Sunday? Sunday. This oh, Sunday. this Sunday. Yep. Oh, okay. Sunday uh, at 12 p.m. Great. And then they have another one in May. That, okay. Yeah. At 12 p.m. on a Sunday, also May 22nd. I'll email everyone the date, so it's like all laid out in one email. I like that cleaned. Yeah, I, did, I, yeah, helped, that is I helped clean up the gardens there for a few hours one morning. I, I don't remember what time of the year that was. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Okay, so great meeting. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Motion, yeah. Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Yes. Where's the gavel? Second. 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 Okay. <laughs> support. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> this was really productive. I'm glad to see everybody. Yeah, it worked out well. Thank Very you. exciting. Yeah.